What is going on? It is Daniel with Queerway TV. Today we are talking about clutch levers, grips, combination of the sort, and clutch problems. So we're going to be taking a look at factory clutch lever versus a, um, I forget the name, road race or something. It's like a sport bike uh, trick lever. Um, in its uh, standard position and ASV with some rogue grips another ASV with uh, some standard waffle grips and then we will be looking at the um, sport lever lever assembly that that we sell with standard grips so why do we care so much about clutch levers? Well, I would say over 90% of bikes that come in that need a clutch or that have excessive transmission wear, mainly it's a clutch issue. We'll come up with the burn clutch. We'll have um, two things. The yawn lube deal that we've talked about before, very common. But the other one is always... Um, ASVs or some type of aftermarket lever that's supposed to be an easier pull and in combination they always seem to have rogue grips now not rogue in particular but a heavy fat padded grip that is oversized so what are we going to talk about is what the change in lever is doing why it is perceived as a softer pull and what the deal is with grips, the effect that that is causing on a cable pull. And we will also get in a little bit on the extended levers for the clutch arm. Now that one's a bit more difficult to, uh, to show. I'd have to, uh, install one and, and look at, um, angle of pull. But um, we're saying no to those as well. Uh, same issue. So we are going to stock start with a stock lever. We are going to measure the distance the cable pulls when I pull the lever from a standard adjusted position. So we got about a, a quarter in there. Can fit a nickel in there. That's your kind of guide. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go one finger, pull the the slack out of it, and then we're going to do a full pull and measure the distance and change there. And then we're going to go and look at a couple other levers and what they are doing. So may or may not be able to see the caliper when I do this, but we're going to do generalized readings here to get very close to our uh, our goal. So. I'm pulling out the slack with one finger and we're going to measure here, pulling out the slack. Okay. We're roughly starting at a 10. Uh, okay. We'll start right there at zero, just a little touch of pressure. So we are going hundred thou, 200 thou, sliding off here at 300 thou. 400 thou, 500, and almost 530. That is the length that cable is pulling, cable is traveling, and that's how much clutch release you're getting from there. So we will go over to this bike with the sport lever on it and do the same thing. Now this bike has a lockup and the rest of the bikes have a lockup. So we are going to see there the same deal, same measurement. So we're pulling the slack out, starting at about 50. So we're 100 thou, 200 thou, 300 thou. So we are a very low amount of pull here. And maybe this cable has a touch of slack in it. But 100, 200, 
320 pal, so not a whole lot there. Let's go on to this one with the ASVs and the Rogues. And that bike had Rogues on it. All right, let's see. Same deal here. Start at roughly 50 there. 100, 200, 300, and we'll call it 340. One more, stay with me, and then we will get on to uh, uh, the lever we use. Now, sometimes these bikes come in, customers already have a lever. Normally try to talk them out of it, make them change it. But, um, you know, here we are either way. Okay, pulling the slack. 100 thou, 200 thou. Boy, there's something a little heavy about this. Just over 300, 315, 320. Somewhere in that range. Now on to, I got to lock up on this bike, same deal. Different levers, stock, stock grips, our sport lever with stock style grips. Let's do this deal again and see where we're at. Okay, we're starting, we'll call that zero, but one, two, three, four. So 500. Gonna run it again, just to be sure. Pulling the slack. Yeah, we're actually starting more toward 20, actually. One, two, three, four. So 500. So this lever assembly is the closest to a factory setup. It is very close, just a touch off. But the biggest thing, the biggest concern with most riders is the factory lever has a terrible out sweep design on it, which makes that lever extremely far from the bar. That's like a lot of guys why they are buying the ASV levers so they can run them a lot closer to the bar. So as this one here, and they all have adjustment in here, but any bit of adjustment pushes them out really far, really quick. So ASV in a normal position, we're going to have to do some type of, um, measurement and just call it good not being super accurate we'll go center of the bar or uh center of the bar to the center of this dimple here we're just getting a generalized range but we're uh four and a quarter on that one we are right about four inches Let's see, yeah, four and a eighth range, four inches on this one. A factory lever is all the way out at a, um, readjust my hand, almost, and we're kind of eyeballing here, so don't get too accurate on me, but we're almost at five and a half inches, five and three eighths. So a huge jump for where people want the lever to be. So we come to this sport lever and we'll do the same thing, kind of midline there, midline on the grip. And we are right about 
uh, four and seven eighths, just under five inches. So closer to the bar by um, by a bit. And when we pull the lever, the other thing is if that lever closes fully and sits flat to the bar without interference. So a lot of the ASVs don't clear this properly. And if if you set them up to, then you can't adjust the uh, the adjuster properly. Uh, a lot of issues with uh, bar fitment. A lot of times you'll see this switch assembly on the back side of the ASV. And one other thing, clutch switch too. If you want that clutch switch in there, well, no ASVs for you. So what does that all mean? We're taking a huge swing of cable pole difference from stock to the sport lever to the two ASVs. Like those are going down a huge difference in pull, but what that does is when you're pulling the lever and you're sitting in gear, the clutch is all moving. The fibers are moving on the steels when you're sitting in gear. So if you're in gear, and you got the clutch pulled and you rev the bike, you can smoke the clutch just sitting there doing nothing. If you go and rev the bike, if you have ASVs or issue where it's not releasing the clutch all the way. So that is a, a major problem that we see over and over. The other thing that is most uh, commonly a complaint or seen by the customer is that we'll hear is um, they'll say, hey, I can't get it into neutral easily. And what's going on with that is due to the clutch lever setup, not releasing the clutch all the way, the clutch still has some tension on it. So the transmission is loaded. So it is difficult to go from uh, in gear loaded to that neutral position because of the fact that it is under load so all of these things say oh i bought my lever on ebay it's great it's a soft pull well grow some balls work out your hand do what you got to do to be able to pull a lever because if it's soft pull you got to think why is the reason why is it a softer pull and the reason is the ratio from the pivot point to the cable is different. So you do pick up some smoothness in design. If it has a bearing in there, if it has a nice bushing in there, if it's machined better. But all of the ASVs I've seen, all of the aftermarket levers that I've seen come in, all have a reduced ratio. So that means if it's a, uh, a, a four to one, means it's um, pulling the cable, you know, uh, one per every, per every four or, or vice versa. Meaning if you have an inch of travel on your lever, then it's gonna pull the cable uh, one inch. So if it's a five to one ratio, uh, that's gonna change how much you have to pull the lever and it's going to be softer. So. The easiest setup you can do if you're building power, you don't want a heavy clutch, is for one, don't want run these grips, they're too thick. The next one is you can run a lockup clutch and run factory springs, so we don't have to go into the heavier springs. The next thing is make sure your cable routing is proper as well as cable lubricated and then we come back to this lever which is the reason why we like it so much is because even though it's a factory type lever that it's simple in design but it operates smoothly without reducing the ratio we get a small ratio change but smooth operation and the geometry of the lever works well for that application. So a little bit of long video. That is my thoughts, my history on it here. 
over um, a lot of years seeing this same bike, same problem over and over and over and over and over all of the time. So it irritates me some. This factory lever assembly, I mean, they can't even get it out of the same material. This thing's junk. That needs to go away to have a nice feel. Even even brand new, they're like, they're okay, but you get about five rides on them and they turn pretty crusty pretty quick. So a lot of issue there, but a few small things can cause some really big problems. The last thing we didn't talk about is if you're dragging the clutch when you have the lever pulled in, that makes it more difficult to shift. And under power, you end up chipping the egg, the uh, edges of the cogs because you have load uh, still on. You have torque still applied to the transmission while you're trying to shift. So instead of dropping in without any torque on it, now you're torque in between gears and they tear up all the gears. So that is what we have for today. I hope that explains a lot. The arms on the motor, where we talked about, where we'll, we'll discuss that again and, and not to use them, is those are changing the ratio, but they're changing it down on the engine side. So same deal as the reduced ratio up here. Now you have a reduced ratio down here. The combination of both of them is very bad. Just doing the one is bad. So um, back to the finger workouts. Got to figure that out. Or get yourself a, a Can-Am with no clutch lever. So, all right. There you have it. We will talk to you on the next one.